don't worry, we're just going over basics today. So, thanks for clicking the video and giving me a shot. Mathematics, to a lot of people, is scary. Or is it boring? Scarily boring. Often even the teachers that are supposed to teach you this stuff find it boring. So, why do we learn it? Well, math is gonna be there whether you close your eyes or not, and the more you know, the more you can control and achieve greatness. So, hello! You can call me Nordis, and I'm here with my own creature project based off of STEM topics to give a face to some abstract concepts. Familiar with Pokemon? Though I'm in the process of distancing my work from that industry titan, I'll be using their type system and abilities in this video. So, how do you represent abstract math concepts? Well, it depends on what math concept I want to represent. I feel like the most applicable operations other than something like multiplication is the derivative. Hold up, I should talk about limits first. In calculus class, you first learn about limits, which is all about what the function gives you when you approach a certain input. You mess around a lot, you find out a lot. Initially, this sounds dumb. Just plug in the darn value into the function. Okay, okay. But some functions like to lie. Say the function looks like this, and you want to mess around for two units. Now, you can't just plug in two into the mess axis, right? But where does the function go to? That's what the limit is about. You write the line coming in from the left of the value, and then you write the line coming in from the right, and oh, whoop, turns out there are different outputs. And that's what the limit is about, approaching that value, especially in times when you can't just plug it in and when the value appears to approach positive or negative infinity. Now, you don't need graphs, of course. You can mentally do this with numbers and tools like the L'Hopital rule, but we've reached my limit which is a mushroom with arms that come up pointing towards their head. I made the head round as if it's a certain point on the graph, with the arms coming up on both ends like how the limit leads up to that point. There's a lot of rules you can follow to find a derivative of a function. Power rules, logarithm rules, trigonometry, but what does all this work for anyways? Well, derivatives are often written like this d over dz x yeah. But this basically means delta over delta x, where delta means change. It's the change of this function over the change of the x-axis. If you're using x and y axes, there's a change of y over the change of x. This is just the slope. The derivative tells you the slope of the function at a certain point. I mean, not all graphs are straight lines, right? They could change quite a lot, but mathematically, if you take the derivative of a function, it gives you another function, where if you put an input, it tells you to slope that input experience in the previous function. It's kind of like magic, right? It's because we're skipping a few steps, but that's the beauty of mathematics. So when do we actually use this? It's kind of weird how people always ask this during math class, but no one bats an eye when someone tells you the whole lore of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Anyways, you use derivatives a lot in physics. Velocity in physics is the derivative of where you went. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity. And the derivative of acceleration is called jerk, but you get the point. In physics, when in doubt, well, multiply your factors, but when in bigger doubt and you need to get a function of something per second or something per unit, derivatize, der derivatize, use derivatives. Before I show you my derivative mon, how the heck am I going to make a mon based off of this? Well, I never said I'm representing math symbols, no. My main goal is to represent the concept. And what does the slope at a certain point look like? A tangent line. Come on, artists should know what tangent lines mean, right? It kisses the graph at that one point and goes off. Thus, we have Derivite, here looking like a fairy stool mushroom with a flat top. Even the ruffles look pretty flat. In their decks, I was thinking of having to walk off cliffs without falling like Looney Tunes style, as long as they don't change the direction that they're facing, because that's the slope they're traveling on. 
So where do we go from here? Well, the fundamental theorem of calculus not only is about derivatives, but also their counterpart, antiderivatives, also called undefined integrals, where defined integrals have definite boundaries, undefined just doesn't have those boundaries. But you've seen these signs before, right? Pretty spooky. It's a big S, which stands for spooky. Just kidding. It stands for sum. Why? So when you take an integral of a range of a certain point, instead of telling you the slope, it tells you nothing. Okay, well, what if the range is a little wider and whoa, it tells you the area. The function you get by integration tells you how much is beneath the original function's curve or above if that function dips below the axis. It's like summing all the values. That's where the sum comes from, the big S. Yeah, it's summing all the values of these single infinitely thin craft cheese rectangles, not sponsored, in that range. So, in short, the antiderivative of a function would give you a new function, which is also called the indefinite integral. And it's called the antiderivative because if you derivatize that new function, you'll end up with the initial function you started with. It's basically the opposite, it's like multiplication versus division. And what does this integral tell you? Well, when you define its range, it's now called the definite integral, but it gives you a value of how much area would have been below that graph inside that input range that you gave it. Also, by the way, this plus C here, this constant here, is often added in indefinite integral because when you take the derivative of a constant, it just kaput goes to zero. So we don't actually know what constant it would have started at. It could have started at one, two, bajillion. That's why we just put in C. That's just kind of like the blank number. All this talk to show you the final evolution of Melimit. Entangle. The body is loosely referencing the big S that is the integral sign, but more importantly, the cap generates a veil to represent the area beneath a curve. I guess it would have been fun to somehow flip Derivite's design because this is an anti-derivative, but I already liked how it came out, and I thought the area part was the more memorable concept to capture. From limits, to derivatives, to integrals. Hooray! You've just got the gist of calculus. I have other math designs and a lot of other STEM-related designs I want to share with you, but I think that's enough for one day. I'd love to and plan to make a game with these designs in the future, but I want to stress that it's gonna take a long while, so follow along on my journey if you want to see more designs like these and possibly a playable version later down the road. Also, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for directly supporting my content. I share some work in progress shots and some annotated notes about past iterations of my designs with some of the higher tiers. But either way, thank you all so much for watching till the end, especially for this math-centric video. So, class dismissed. Bruh, does that sound pretentious? It might, it probably does. I, I need to work on my outros.